Good morning, friends, and welcome to a sun-drenched summer Saturday morning. My name is Pastor Bill Johnson of the First United Methodist Church in Orange, California, and this is another episode of We Are the Church, our daily ministry of encouragement. Let's get started. Friends, today a verse from the 43rd Psalm, Psalm 43, verse 3. It says, O oh, send out your light and your truth, and let them lead me, let them bring me to your holy hill. There is a sense in the scriptures of God's light always guiding us. In, in our utility room at our house, we have a whole shelf that is dedicated to flashlights that are waiting to be healed by the Lord. Some of them have dead batteries, some of them have no batteries, some of them, I'm sure, have lights that are burned out. Over the years, we seem to have been acquiring a kind of refugee supply of old dead flashlights, and uh, not sure what we're gonna do with them, but one of my summer projects this year is to go through and find out what works and what doesn't, and replenish all of the batteries so that we have some light. It does occur to me if that some kind of catastrophic event that caused a power outage were to occur. We had no street lights or any other ambient lights in the neighborhood. I'm not sure what we would do, save light a candle. There's always the old technologies. The light that we bring to our lives is intermittent and often um, you know, unpredictable. But what the psalmist reminds us is that the light of God comes from an inexhaustible source, an utterly predictable and utterly faithful source. As the psalmist over and over cries out, the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. And so when we ask God to send out the light of God through the reading of scriptures, through prayer, through paying attention to all the, the means of God's grace, through listening to the wise counsel of friends, to uh, being in worship. In all of these ways, we ask God to send God's light. And the inevitable result of God sending out that light is that it will guide a pathway, a sure and a certain pathway to the holy hill, to the place of communion with the Lord. Now we understand in our time that through the gift of the Holy Spirit, that communion can take place in a deep and a personal way. But it's also extraordinary when we gather for worship and that communion of God takes place in a corporate way and we sense the Lord with us. So my prayer for you on this Saturday is that the Lord will lead you by the inexhaustible light of God, will lead you to his holy hill and lead you into right paths for his name's sake. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that you do send your light upon the world that the light that you bring is not given as the world gives. We praise you, O oh God, for whenever we turn to you, you show us the next step, the way that we need to go. And so we lift our lives to you on this Saturday and ask you to be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, have a wonderful Saturday today. I want to remind you, if you're in worship at the First United Methodist Church of Orange on Sunday, that we are masking for the time being, but you're free to come, and uh, we certainly would love to see you there, especially tomorrow. We're going to be baptizing a young, uh, a little boy that, whose name is Bauman Lee Hicks, and he is the uh, grandson of uh, Vicki and Mike Short. So you'll want to be there for that. If you're watching online, it's a great opportunity for you to renew your own baptismal vows as we, as a congregation, welcome Bauman and renew our vows. In the meantime, remember to wash your hands, remember to read a song, and remember to tell someone today that you love them. I'll see you soon.